Are you in love? Of course you are. You've manifested a man that has captured your heart and your attention. Despite your patience and best efforts, this relationship hasn't transformed into the commitment that you want or perhaps were even promised. So now you find yourself on YouTube seeking answers, rituals, support, tricks, and formulas to win his love. Somewhere along this journey, you probably question if you're being delusional or whether any of this is even possible. Can you manifest love at all? Can you manifest the love of a specific person? The answer is yes, but as you've come to realize during this journey, there's always a catch. Manifesting is always about feelings. You are manifesting what it feels like to live out a certain experience. At some point in your journey, you made him more important than the experience itself. You have placed him on a pedestal, but when you remove him from it, you will manifest the love that you deserve. So let's remove that pedestal. Welcome to Here Nor There. This channel is dedicated to empowering you through the art of conscious creation, shaping the life that you aspire to live. I would greatly appreciate it if you hit that like, share, and subscribe button down below and leave a comment. Follow me on social media and join our Facebook community through the links below in the description. This will help us to stay connected, ensuring that you never miss any updates. Before I begin, let me talk to my fellows for a second. I pride my content on being inclusive to all, but this particular episode is dedicated to the ladies following here nor there, just as the Get Your Ex Back episode was for the men. Check that one out, by the way. However, in this discussion, switch the pronouns and use this information given for your own journey. In order to truly understand your power, we have to establish our foundation first. This channel is based off of the law of assumption as taught by Neville Goddard, but there's very little information on the topic of manifesting a specific person. Did Neville believe in manifesting a person himself? Indeed he did. In fact, he once told a story of how he deliberately manifested his second wife. It is my belief that he didn't get into the gritty details about how to manifest a specific person because he left us with one speech that surmised exactly what we needed to know. What I'm about to narrate for you is an excerpt from one of Neville's lectures that has famously become known as that man or no man within the community. In it, Neville spoke to a young woman who asked specifically about manifesting the man that she had fallen in love with. The exchange went a little something like this. I have had people say to me, you know, I want that man or no man. I said, no, you don't. You want to be happily married. You don't want that man or no man. Oh yes, that man or no man. I say, if he dropped dead right now, would you want to be married? Well, he isn't going to drop. I didn't ask you that. If he dropped dead right now, or if he right this very moment was accused of being the world's greatest thief or murderer, do you still want him? Well now, why ask those questions, Neville? I want that man. But you see, it isn't that man. They want to be happily married. I have gone to so many weddings where it was either that man or none, and it wasn't that man. And they are embarrassed when they see me standing in the aisle because it had to be that man or no man. And here it isn't that man at all. And they walk down the aisle. They are happy with their new mate but a little sheepish as they pass by because they know, I know, he was not that man. Now, let's address the elephant in the room here. Was Neville informing this woman and everyone in attendance that she could not manifest the specific man she wanted? No, this excerpt is often misunderstood. What Neville was trying to explain to the woman is that her primary desire is to be happily married, but she has unintentionally placed that man over her desire. She has placed him on a pedestal. She has placed obtaining him over the experience of feeling loved, adored, and committed to. Whenever you place your desire over the feeling, both desire and the feeling will fail to manifest into your life in the way that you wish. You have compromised yourself. But don't worry, this is an easy fix once we define and understand the underlying issue here. You are perfect as you are, but the problem is that you may not believe it yourself. You see, in my coaching sessions, the comments, and in groups that I've been a part of, I've came across quite a few ladies who have taken this vow of celibacy until they manifest the man they want or the man they once had. This celibacy is in all forms, not just intimacy. They have effectively shut themselves down to all forms of love in order to manifest one specific man. So they mistakenly have entered into a state of lack. The experience of a passionate commitment is the goal. A lifelong blissful marriage is the goal. But somehow, we have all found ourselves waiting and longing for one person at some point in our individual journeys. I've been guilty of it too. You may be realizing this just now as you're watching this video. You have been trying, waiting, and compromising yourself in order for this one person to give you this love that you desire when the very same desire already surrounds you. If you do not compromise your assumption of who you are, you will always manifest the love you desire. So one of the biggest breakthroughs that I've had in my personal love life is when I decided what I wanted to be rather than who I wanted to be with. For years, I was stuck in this same cycle. 
I would basically fall in love with a beautiful woman and then I would place her over the experience of being loved. When you unintentionally do this, you end up making your manifestation about having that person's affection and attention. This is what leads to accepting hot and cold behavior from your man. This is what leads to accepting neglect. This is what leads to accepting third party situation. Because you have placed him on the pedestal above your desire, above yourself, just having his attention means more than feeling love. When I decided that I wanted to be happily married and that I wanted to shift in the state of being of being a husband, the woman that I've always wanted materialized just weeks later. Every time I assumed what I wanted to be and didn't waver on it, I've always obtained it. It's simply because I shifted into the state of a person who is committed to by placing the goal above the person I experience it with. So as paradoxical as it always seems, that shift in focus is almost always enough to get the man of your dreams. When us law of assumption advocates speak of persisting, it's often misunderstood as persisting in a given technique or persisting in trying to manifest someone. No, it truly means to persist in the assumption of who you truly are, to persist in your imagination that you already are who you visualize yourself to be. So when your lover offers you a downgraded form of relationship that you desire, you decline it because that is not the end that you've already envisioned. So does that mean that you should go general with your aspirations for love? That you should go general with your affirmations? Yes and no. When you are prioritizing the person over the feeling, you are effectively giving emotional control of yourself to that person. And that is not what living in the end is all about. Instead, focus on the feeling of being loved First and foremost, and the person you desire will serve as a vehicle to experience just that. It is just simply a shift in priority. When you focus on the feeling, you will never compromise for anyone who doesn't make you feel that way. So then they have to reflect that back to you. When you have made this shift, others will see you as you see yourself, and they will reflect that state of consciousness every time. You are a woman that deserves love, and you will not take anything less. You gave him that pedestal. Take it back from him. Bring him to your equal level and place love on that pedestal. While you're at it, place adoration up there, commitment, loyalty, trust. Place these feelings and these experiences on the pedestal, and the algorithm will notice it and respond accordingly. Nobody can tell you if you can or cannot manifest a specific person. That is not up to me or for anyone else to decide for you. If you have a desire to do it, it is already done. So why do I recommend going general in just some very rare instances? I have a better question for you. Why not? Do you trust yourself? This whole discussion is designed in order to get you to trust yourself and by proxy to trust your subconscious. She is always awake, always watching your experiences. She's recording every word, every thought, every belief, and manifesting your reality every second of every day based off of this input. So you might be feeling a little bit discomfort when you think about not mentioning your SP's name in every affirmation you say during the day. I would go so far to say that some of you may even be avoiding any self-concept work in favor of doing specific person techniques. I want to free you from this burden with this simple fact. Your subconscious already knows who you want. Think about it. She's with you all the time and she's always been with you. She knows what makes your heart flutter with excitement. She knows who you care for deeply. So sometimes when you go general, you allow her to bring you to feeling first so you can shift into the state of someone who is loved. So now love is on the pedestal instead of the person. Then deeper forms of love are now open to reaching you. Now the person who didn't want to commit wants to commit. That no has turned into a yes. That I am not ready has turned into I'm ready. Simply because you are now the person who is loved. So the universe has to reflect that back to you in your reality. That is law. Think about when you met your person, ladies. More than likely, you were feeling wonderful about yourself. You were focused on your career, your business, your gym routine, your hobbies. You were traveling, enjoying your friends and enjoying your family. You were being the person who was loved and is loving. Then somewhere along this SP journey, you made the person more important than the experience and your reality began to reflect that shift. It's fine though. Your life is a movie and this whole entire plot is still unfolding. You are the main character and this is the heroine's journey. When you visualize your end scene of marriage, family, and happily ever after, that was effectively the climax of the movie. So you've already experienced the exposition and now we are in the depths of the complication. Reaching the climax that you've envisioned requires you to remove him from the pedestal that you've crafted especially for him. Affirm for your self-concept. Visualize and affirm who you want to be and become that person. That person already has her man. That person doesn't compromise on what she believes or deserves. It's your pedestal. Take it back from them and stand on equal ground with your desire. Let me say one thing. You are your desires. 
The role of a desire is not to make us feel like we are lacking or missing something from ourselves, but to remind us that we are infinite and complete, to remember that the things we want really badly are a part of our entire existence. You are the desire and the desire is you. Rest in knowing that there is no need to micromanage the state that we are in, in every emotion, feeling, and thought, because we are already one with our desire. You are already one with the person you're manifesting. It isn't about making them feel the same way, but about remembering the oneness between you both and the love you both are. It is my intention that you, yes you, embrace this information and manifest the love you deserve back into your life. You will get that love that you deserve from the person you want it from most. And let me be first to say it, congratulations. That has been our discussion for today. I am Sean and you are neither here nor there. Thank you for joining me.